What's up guys, we're back and today we have an Infiniti Q50 sedan VR30 twin turbo. We're going to be installing our uh, 10 inch port muffler, non-resonated X pipe and uh, we'll show you what we got. Okay. So step one, I always go through and I crack the torque loose on all the connection points of the exhaust system. And again, as I previously stated, anytime you're doing this, uh, it's okay to use power tools for removal once the torque is broken. However, on installation of the new components, only ever by hand, hand tools. Torque's broken loose. I just come back now, get all the hardware off. So moving on to this connection point. All the hardware is off. What well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the white pipe and the way I always attack it, so come in here like this. Pop that off like that, and there you go. All right, so white pipe's off. I always move back and move the rear muffler back uh, off next. Easiest way to do that is you just wanna wanna grab it with both hands and kind of slide it straight back and it'll slide out of the rubber hangers. Uh, don't worry about this mid pipe, it's still in rubber hangers, front of it's going to be supported by the cross brace. And just always be aware and try to be careful not to catch the chain on the other one. So moving on to the mid pipe, um, what you're going to want to do, take a little bit of WD-40, spray the connection point between the rubber and the metal hangers. Okay, it's going to allow it to come off, WD-40 is not cooperating here. Time for a new one. Uh oh. There we go. All right, there we go. It's coming out now. Pop that bad boy off just like that. Okay, not all the way though, because you want it to be supported on this side so when you're working over here, it doesn't bonk you in the head. If you have an extra set of hands, it's great. I support it with my elbow. She's off. Walk her out nice and easy. Okay, so every exhaust system we send out, or Nissan Infinity wise, it's gonna come with this heat wrap, some zip ties. Um, this evap canister back here has this electrical line going into it. We've always done this more as preventative maintenance versus uh, actually having an issue. What you're gonna to wanna to do is just zip tie this bad boy on. The muffler does not actually come in contact with it. However, um, it's just a little close, so we're being careful. All right, so take a little pride in your ride. Cut those, please. Next step for me is I like to uh, take the factory hardware out of this cross brace. And what I do is at the four connection points, we're gonna install this spacer with new hardware. Uh, this quarter inch spacer, it's gonna exactly do what it says. It's gonna space this down a quarter of an inch. It's gonna give you more clearance between the bottom of the X-pipe and the top of the uh, cross brace. So we don't get any of those nasty rattles in the driver when you get those phone calls. So today, the cap back we're installing, uh, this customer actually has AMS uh, performance downpipes previously installed on the car. Um, obviously we got some dried up soot here. I just like to take a wire brush, clean off any of those loose impediments, any of those high spots potentially. Uh, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna give a better sealing agent between the gasket and this gasket, as well as the other side of the gasket and our two bolt panel. And I just wipe it off of the rack. All right, so we have the lead pipes. Uh, that's the very first component we're gonna install. And um, I just like to start with the driver's side. You can Preference is yours. Uh, driver side has one dot, and that always goes to the front of the car and inboard, inboard towards the transmission. And you're just going to install that. Like so. Put the hardware on. Hand tight. Snug with a little bit of adjustability still. We're going to need that later. A little bit of a quick hack shortcut, if you will. What I like to do, prior to putting them on, I give them about three or four solid turns. Um, you're still gonna have plenty of movement in there, plenty of size, rather. And what it's just gonna do is when you go to slide it over the X-pipe, uh, once we put the X-pipe on, it's gonna make it a little easier to line it all up and you're not trying to tighten it down on the car. Stick your clamps on first. Uh, it is purely preference which direction these go. I like the tightening point on center. And then, Inboard versus outboard, you can choose. 
make sure you put them on first. We're just about ready to install the X-pipe. What you want to do is that same rubber hanger for the OEM, hit to remove, loop it back up, and rotate them up so they're out of the way. It'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, so today we're installing the non-resonated X-pipe. And um, I've seen a lot in the past, customer will call, say they have a ripped hanger on the back here. And what has happened is they've actually installed the X-pipe upside down. Uh, believe it or not, you can install it both ways. Uh, it does need, it only is correct one way though. And the best way to do that to know is when it's on, hanger going down, well facing front. Uh, if you install it opposite, it's gonna put the system under too much tension, too much in a bind, and you're gonna call us and we're not gonna cover it under warranty because you installed it wrong. And yes, there is a picture specifically in the installation manual as to how to properly do it. So there's that. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the X-Pipe now. Slide to this cross brace area. Okay, get it all lined up on the lead pipes like that. And what I like to do is come back. So I'm doing a little shimmy and a shake. No, you're not gonna get me to dance. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. You don't need to be quite bottomed out. Um, pop the rear hangers in the rubber. Okay, turn them back over, slide them on. Okay, make sure everything's nice and even. Okay, so here at the shop, we have a ton of tools, little shims, things at our disposal. At home, use a Sharpie. And what you want to do, just put the Sharpie between the X-pipe and the cross brace as a preload method, if you will. Everything's gravity fed, it wants to sink down. You're trying to effectively create as much clearance as possible, because once you do tighten the exhaust system and take that out, it's naturally going to want to sag over time anyways. So once, that, once that's done, I'm going to take these clamps, and I'm going to basically get them in place. So clamps are where I want them. Now all you're trying to do at this point is take the slop out of the clamp. So right now I can move this clamp around freely. I'm just tightening it just enough to where I can no longer move it freely. You're gonna come back and torque it down at a later date. Later date and time. So even after hundreds of installs, I'm, t I'm not immune from making mistakes. Um, for all that yapping, I forgot to stick our gaskets in. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna put them in now. All right, so this gasket's in, and ideally you're gonna wanna do this uh, prior to putting the lead pipe on, obviously. Not after the fact, like me. Lead pipes are tight. Your connection point here is snugged up, but not torqued as of yet. And what you wanna do is, uh, using both hands, I like to use these dust covers on both sides as reference points. Just use it as a, a centering point. You want the X-pipe centered. So right now I can feel that the X-pipe's this way. I'm just gonna tap it with the mallet. And there is a little bit of adjustability with this connection point up here that will allow for what you're trying to do right now. Okay, so that's pretty good. We're gonna tighten these down a little bit on each side. Okay, and you're just evenly distributing the load. Okay, so they're pretty snugged up now. I'm gonna go back and check this X-Pipe one more time. Pretty good. Once the X-Pipe's exactly where you like it in the back, we're gonna come back and we're gonna tighten these all the way. Okay. We're moving on to the rear section and same little hack on the rear clamps. Give them a couple turns. Uh, these clamps specifically, you're going to want to put them outboard versus inboard, okay? It's going to be a whole lot easier to tighten them and they're going to look better in the finished process as well. So about two-thirds of the way done, X-pipes on, snugged up, tightened down, as well as the lead pipes. We're moving on to the rear section, rear section of the car, as well as the uh, mufflers. And what you do is take the Sharpie, and give yourself a little starting reference point. That's going to come into play later. Starting with the rear section, I like to do the passenger side first. It's purely preference. Uh, install your rear metal hanger in the rear rubber hanger. And slide the connection point on. Now, so you understand proper installation is with the exhaust tip. The top of the tip is gonna sit flush or slightly recessed inside of the bumper. Uh, when the exhaust system gets hot, 
The tips are gonna actually grow about three eighths of an inch as the entire exhaust system grows and expands as a whole. So keep that in mind when you're installing it. Um, and please go by the installation guide and keep these flush in the install process. Passenger side's on, tips flush. You're gonna rotate this unit to a manner to where you have about a quarter of an inch clearance between this bolt that's sticking out from this brace and the top of the tubing. And that's gonna put this, uh, this um, connection point for the spreader at about level visually. And everything's gonna set real nice there. So your goal at this point, objective, is to put this clamp on and tighten it down and keep this muffler effectively where it's at. Passenger side's tight. It's exactly where you want it to live. Now you're gonna stick the driver's side on, just repeat the same process. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is try to line the in and the out up with this exhaust tip to match the side. Okay, so I'm at a point now where I'm ready to tighten down this driver's side and match it to the passenger. Uh, I visually from above checked the in and the out and I really like what I got. So I'm gonna to shoot to try to keep this. Mm. Mm. Love it. System's on, I'm happy with the way it looks, the way it fits, everything's great, clearance is good. You're gonna to wanna to torque these four connection points down for your four clamps. Um, I believe we have in the installation manual 55 to 60 foot pounds of torque to get a little bit of range. I'm going to tighten them down to that range right there. So we're going to do them at 60 today. Okay, so exhaust system's on, everything's tightened down, and now. Uh, I want to get the tip centered in the cutout, inboard to outboard, and driver's side's great, I'm happy with it, passenger side needs to come in a little bit, so we're going to show you how to do that. I made a reference point earlier with a sharpie, and that was where this metal hanger was affixed to start, um, and now I know, know I need to go inboard. So it's 12 millimeter head on these three bolts, you're just going to loosen them, okay? And you're going to basically, you have a little bit of slop in the hanger, so you can push it in. And I'm going to preload it about where I want it, maybe a tad more inboard because I know it's going to come back a little bit. And we're going to snug it up. And if you've done it correctly, your tip's now centered in your cutout. Okay, so system's on, everything's where we like it. Last but not least is the spreader. And please put it on correctly. Everyone knows what our logo looks like. Not like this, not like this, but like this. Um, the reason you're putting the spreader on, and it's gonna go here, is there's a lot of weight that's pulling on these two connection points of where it's clamped, and the spreader actually locks everything in place, and it alleviates a lot of that weight that's being pulled down, so the mufflers are not gonna to wanna to sag at the time. So, pop that bad boy on, put it straight forward. So each system comes with two shaft collars, you're gonna slide those over the front of the hanger, so the front of the car, towards the back of the car, and you're gonna tighten them down. Over the metal, butt it up to the rubber, snug it up. So last and one of the most important steps, you always wanna wipe the system down. Uh, we use like a Windex, glass cleaner, ammonia. Um, the reason you wanna do it, is you got one shot prior to heat cycling this exhaust system to get all the fingerprints, all the oils from your fingers out of the tubing. If you do that, you're good to go. It'll stay nice, it'll turn gold. Don't do it, and you heat cycle it, you're never gonna get your fingerprints out.